Hey guys, I am popping on because I am going to do a little painting session and I thought something I'm doing might be a little bit helpful for you guys. And this video is just gonna be about me exploring and trying some different things and pulling on some threads and kind of showing you how I go through that process and just playing around with paint materials. So what I've been working on lately is just experimenting with these sort of botanical um, loose elements juxtaposed with some pattern. And the pattern that I like to use is kind of similar to this in that it's very kind of loose and organic. And there's a lot of things being drawn and then covered up and drawn in again and covered up again to build up those layers. So this actually has several layers on it, even though it looks really simple. And I've just been really, really, really enjoying this. I'll show you another one that I did recently. And I like this one because it's got flex of that other palette in it and there's yellows popping through because when I took the paint off with paper towel there was some yellow paint still on there and so that left traces of it here and in here and I came through with some neo color and put that down and because the neo color I have is neo color 2 it's water soluble so when I go to put paint over it and pull it off it smudges a little bit and it just adds to that looseness um, overall. So what I'm going to do today is work on gathering some more patterns because I want to do a deep dive into this. This might get mixed in with like really large landscapes or something at some point, but I really just want to go deep into playing with all the different ways that I can make patterns and botanicals and see kind of what I can come up with and how far I can push it. And the reason for that is you can kind of tell when somebody's painting something whether the idea is developed enough because there's a richness to it or whether it's underdeveloped. Maybe it's something they just figured out and they made a painting um, and they're sharing it or selling it. And that's totally fine. There's no judgment there. But for me, I really don't want to put stuff out there until it's got like that really subtle nuance and richness to it. I'm just going to flip to a clean page. Um, I'll link this below, but this is just a pad of Bristol paper and I painted the cover just so it wasn't the, you know, the sad usual um, cover that's on there. All I did was put acrylic paint and collage on that and throw some gloss medium over it. And I really prefer these days the Bristol paper to the mixed media paper. I just feel like it's the paint sits on top of it better than it does with mixed media. I'm not really using super fluid stuff, so I don't need anything that's gonna, I don't know, play nice with fluid paints and inks and things like that. Though I think this would probably be fine. So what I've been doing, and let me pull this out, is... One of the great tips that I can give you is pull from other places. Don't just follow a bunch of artists on Instagram um, and be pulling from those places all the time because you want some of the places you're pulling. If you're pulling from like non-artwork artist type places, things are going to be a little bit more or a lot more yours because you're taking something from somewhere else and pulling it into your own way of doing things. And the way that I love to do that is by following interior design accounts. And the reason for that is this is basically like a composed painting without actually being a painting. An interior designer understands color, they understand composition, they understand all those elements of design that artists understand. Um, a photographer also composed this picture and took it, you know, somebody decided to open that door so that pop of blue would be coming through. That's not an accident. Your eye goes here. These are complementary colors. It's not an accident that they do these things. Um, so coming to these accounts for color inspiration is great. And also I like to get ideas for patterns 
And while I can make up my own, sometimes it's nice to pull from other sources so that you're not spending your decision making and that creative energy on pulling something from nothing. You're spending it extrapolating from something and interpreting it into your own language. Because let's face it, we each only have so much mental energy in the day and creating from nothing, even though it might be a simple pattern, by the way, when you're doing that over and over again, it does tend to tax you. So don't, you know, underestimate that if you're a unicorn and you're just can create from nothing all the time um, and you don't get taxed, that's awesome. But like I said, it's fine to find things for inspiration to pull from. So I'm going to use this and I grabbed a whole bunch of my colors of paint to have out on my table. I get a lot of questions about this in my messages. So I'll give you the ingredient links to the ingredients and the instructions in the notes below because this isn't something you can just buy off the rack. So I am just going to set this up over here. I have a little thing that I can put that on. And I have some dry pastels. I have some oil pastels. I've got some Neo Color 2s and a little container right here. And I have my paint. And that's all I'm going to be working with today. I have a pencil, I guess, in case I need it. So I'm just coming in here and I'll zoom in. And I'm looking at this blanket with all these little... Sorry, I'm lining this up. And it's got all these angled lines like in a patchwork. And so I'm just gonna pull from that and do that on part of my paper and then maybe pull in some patterns from other parts of the paper. Or rather the image. And I haven't done what I've been doing um, with, with the oil pastels or the new pastels yet. And new pastels, these are just hard pastels. And so I'm just gonna come in, just to make sure this is under the camera. And I'm just trying to, sorry, my cats are trying to escape. I imprisoned them. Um, so I could film this and we have doorknobs that have handles on them. And so he's trying to escape. <laughs> and so, like I said, this isn't necessarily going to look exactly like that quilt on there. I'm not trying to do like the same number of stripes and the same color and the same orientation. I just saw angled stripes in different directions and I'm just playing with that idea. Um, apparently in a very primary palette. And let's see. Now let's mix it up and do an oil pastel. So that'll be fun. And I don't mind this pastel dust. I'm gonna put paint over this. So I'm hoping that these little flecks that the new pastel left behind um, is gonna get picked up in the paint and just add some more pigment to that. Like I'll probably use a white to go over this just to see what the colors do. I think I'll do that now. Now, you know what, I'm gonna put a pop of green over here. And I like that all the marks are different. You know, some are scratchier, some are wider. That variety juxtaposed with the repetition um, just gives it a little bit more interest. So I am just gonna dump the paint right on there. This isn't exactly a titanium white. This is a warm white that I've mixed up. Um, so if you're going to try something like this and you don't want it to be all bluish and chalky, 
It's cat hair. It's always free cat hair with every painting. Um, if you don't want your white to be bluish, if you mix up some white paint, maybe keep it in a bottle of the titanium white, but add a few kinds of yellows to it just a little bit and keep adding a little as you go. It'll warm it up so that when you go to use it either straight or in mixing, it'll keep it from getting that really weird bluish chalky color. Um, I really don't like it. So I pretty much don't ever use just regular titanium white. All right. So I've put a nice layer on here. And what's fun about this is I like to come in with a paper towel and pull some of it off. And I never quite know um, what it's going to look like because it does change underneath a little bit. And so that pulled quite a bit off, but this like just makes it look more sensitive and um, like organic and pushes it into the background. And I like to come in too with sometimes just a couple little sprays of water. I gotta let it sit for a few seconds so that it can loosen up the acrylic paint that's underneath. Because what it does sometimes is it'll just pull off where you sprayed and you'll get more flex um, of like more richer color coming through like in here where it pulls it off. And having that in there just adds a little bit of interest and nuance to the area. And I think for me right now, I'm most interested in like how rich can I get something by just adding just these tiny, tiny nuances to it and really just bringing it up, bringing a painting up that way. I can always come back in and add something bold, you know. Um, so let's see what other painting or what other pattern is in here. Let me look. That couch is kind of a crazy pattern, but that could be fun. It's like almost looks like Celtic knotwork. So I'm going to just have a go and not think about this too much. So I'm just grabbing an oil pastel. And let me think actually, what do I want to do? You know, let's do something more bold. My target notifications for Halloween costumes. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna come in, I'm trying to see if that's an oval. It doesn't need to be exact, but since it's such a strange shape, it's almost like a, it's not really a figure eight. So I'm just gonna come back in and do this. You know what I mean? it's okay to change it up. So I'm just gonna keep riffing off this pattern that's sort of evolving. Again, it's not exactly like the couch pattern, but that's okay, I'm just pulling something. If I had sat down to do like playing with pattern and pulling out my own ideas, I would not have done this. And that's kind of the point. Like I never would have thought to even try doing something like this. Um, I probably would not have even done that because we tend to fall into our same patterns over and over again um, and what we're comfortable with and that's okay. But sometimes it just needs a little something. And Maybe we'll do a bigger one. Those patterns can still have variety. And this is what I love is pushing it because my I know my brain 
my brain wants to make a pattern like on the couch where everything's super even and just the way it is, and that's okay. But I think a lot of times when we're painting, we get into this um, to play and to experiment and to feel free. And if you start following things exactly, you're gonna start feeling probably, I think for most people, kind of constricted and it's gonna kind of get away from why you got into this whole thing in the first place. So maybe I'll do a little one going off the page. And then I'm gonna grab a pastel and I'm gonna come in here and do some more repetition. These are like Christmas colors. Um, but just changing it up with a different color in one spot. So now I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna use this light pink color or do I wanna use, uh, let's go for something bright. I've been loving yellow, lemon yellow lately. Not sure why. Um, the reason I love the paint mixture that I use is for a few reasons. It's really expensive most of the time to buy soft body paint and I don't want to have to mess with my paint every single time I want to sit down to paint. I just want soft body paint that I can quickly open and squeeze out. And so, and I also want paint that's a little more matte and not plasticky and I found ingredients that make that happen. And I'll share that with you. I thought about doing a whole video on it, but it seemed like it would get boring really fast. She'd just be watching me mix stuff. So. And some of this green, you'll notice, is getting picked up and put in other places. That's good. Again, that's just adding to that subtlety and nuance. Some of it will end up coming off. That's okay, too. I'm going to take my paper towels and pull this off. And again, we can come in here, maybe in a few spots, add some water. So what I'm looking for when I see these is how I could use this in sort of a background of a painting just to give some abstraction in different areas because I really love pattern when it's mixed with other things that kind of don't necessarily go like maybe this is in part of a landscape somewhere or something like that and it's maybe in the background or I've painted the landscape over it with things like this popping through. So let me see what else I can get from this. And so my initial reaction is actually just to do these like pom-poms on the pillow because they'll look really scritchy um, and loose if I put them on like with the texture that they have. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll use... Um, some Caran d'Ache this time because they'll probably move a little bit and you'll be able to see how that happens. Just trying to pick some colors that I know are going to pop through. I'll stick with these. 
So I'm just looking at the pillow and just getting this idea for these like scratchy things. This is just mimicking the pom-poms that are on that pillow. And I'm not really following a pattern. Um, I'm gonna make a big one over here. And then, do I have a yellow in here? Do you not have the yellow I want in here? Hang on one second. This could go poorly, but we'll find out. No big deal. That's the other thing about this. Even if this doesn't go well, it's fine. And we'll put one kind of going off the page over there. I haven't done it with this color yet, so one last one. Okay, so same as the others, but I'm gonna do pink over this this time. And part of this is just experimenting too with what colors I'm gonna like over what you know what I mean? Like what neo colors do I like under what color of paint peeking through and what do the new pastels do and what color combinations do I like there? Cause they'll be a little bit different. So you can kind of tell this is moving under here a little bit, which is good. So that'll give me some surprises. And this yellow paint is still a little wet. I'm gonna use this anyway, because if it transfers, it's just gonna add something to this. And in fact, this is what I often do is I'll come in and do one of these just to integrate things, try things. So you should experiment um, in your sketchbooks and things have a place to do that. So that's where all the good ideas are gonna come from. This is dry and I think this is vibrant, which is great, but I kind of want to see if I put another layer over it. Oops, it's a lot of white. Is what happens if I cover some of it with this and then take it off. Just adding some paint up here so it's the whole page is covered. I guess we'll do the same over here. See what that brings us. Add a little bit of the pink back in here. This is also too what's great if you're working on a whole piece at once, you know, really kind of don't stick to one spot, keep moving around because by adding all these little flecks of color, it's actually integrating everything on the page, and making everything relate to other things.
that way there's things coming and going on here. Like, I like this, but I don't need a lot of this. Um, if like, say this was gonna be a painting, I don't need a lot of this on here. If you notice, like your eye just goes right here because of how bright and saturated this is. Um, but having some of that and covering some of it up and coming through like this um, just really adds that subtlety that I really like. So I hope this is helpful in giving you some ideas about how you can pull from other places and play around with the idea to bring it into your artwork and just see what happens. Um, you might not always, actually I know you won't always get a result that you like, but by doing this, you're gonna start to generate ideas for bringing things into your own artwork. And if you work abstractly at all, um, I almost feel like this is something we all have to be doing on a fairly regular basis. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.